<laughs> good morning. Hey, good morning. It's Dr. James. I hope this message finds you and your loved ones peaceful, thriving, and well. And you know, right up front, I want to let you know, I totally get that many of you are waiting for me to come <laughs> come out of the dark. You know, so people go, man, James, a lot of your treehouse talks over the last few weeks and months have been pretty heavy. Well, you know what? It's been pretty heavy. It's been very, very hard over these last few months. And uh, I do my very best just to be honest and real and open. And in the spirit of that, this morning, I just feel it was a blessing from God. It was like I came across this beautiful study on emotional intelligence, and in particular, about money and fun. A very, very interesting. And it reminded me of two things. So if you just take two minutes with me, you're gonna love this story. And I think it'll just fit into what's going on these days in relationship to how we use emotional intelligence to help us to navigate these times, whether it's with ourselves, with people we love, the world, and hopefully create more abundance in our life. And it's a story about Steve Jobs. Now, Steve Jobs is a very, very complex character. He was a complex character. And anyone who's read his biography knows that there was as much awesomeness as there was some challenges-ness. <laughs> but I had a very, I had a personal experience with Steve Jobs through his partner who uh, founded Apple, that's Steve uh, Wozniak. And Steve and I were doing a presentation teaching, uh, a teaching presentation in Zurich, Switzerland a few years ago. And one of the things that uh, Steve Wozniak said about them when they were actually starting Apple, when it wasn't even Apple yet, but they were working together in that infamous garage in Silicon Valley in California way back when, they were working together in their very first day. And they were in that garage and the light was on. It's that sort of, you know, uh, like that. Everyone goes, ah, oh, remember that? It's like that. You can see the light in the garage. You see these two guys working in there doing this tech stuff before tech was even really happening. And at the end of that day, Steve Wozniak was asked, or actually each other, they said, ah, you know, what, what do you think about today? How do you feel? And Steve Jobs kind of said, well, I don't know. I think this is a lot of fun. I think we should keep doing it. And you know, you hear that, you go, wow. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak created arguably the most successful company in the history of companies. And it remains one of the most profitable companies today of tons and tons of resources. And they touch everyone across the world, everybody. And they started that day under the influence of fun. And fast forward years and years later, the day that they launched the iPhone, it was 2007. And at that same time, uh, Steve Jobs was in remission. He had uh, been diagnosed with his stage four pancreatic cancer. He was in remission, but he was really, really um, unhealthy. He was going through a dark time and ultimately the cancer would take his life. But he was in front of 4,000 of his top people at Apple and he was introducing the iPhone. And in front of everyone, he had a big screen going. He was a master at presentation, the big screen going. And he you know, had himself, you could see a giant version of himself behind himself. And he had the iPhone and he's like, you know what? These are all the things they can do. And he was showing the map thing and blah, blah, blah. And he kind of, he goes, and look at this. He typed in Starbucks uh, to get the local Starbucks. It pops up with a phone number. And then he just go, when he, <laughs> there in front of 4,000 people, he dialed Starbucks and they picked up and he goes, hey, I'd like to order 4,000 lattes to go. <laughs> and then he goes, prank call, and he hung up. And of course, everyone is laughing. I mean, he literally did this in front of the his biggest investors, his board, his, his top people. And, you know, people who look back at that, and the, re the research and the study was done, it was published in Inc. Magazine, it was talking about culture. And it was talking about the power of fun and the power of humility and fun and just being a person who's not afraid to expose themselves as being open to fun. And, you know, Steve Jobs, obviously, again, complex character, had a lot of dark stuff as much as all his great successes, but what he was really good at was culture and building culture and obviously building an amazing brand in Apple. But there's something about the essence of that experience that people talk about today in business schools all over the world. His ability to get people to laugh, his ability to galvanize around something of being silly, a, a prankster, and nothing malicious in that, obviously, because I don't think anyone was putting together 4,000 lattes. 
But I think we can look at our times right now and we got to look around and ask ourselves, okay, man, we, if we want to be dark, we can find a ton of dark and I get dark every day. I see dark stuff. It makes me sad. I get angry sometimes. I, I feel like, oh my gosh. And then I'm learning more and more though, in the middle of all this, trust me, you guys, over these last several months, it's been rough for all of us. But I do do my best to do little things like uh, put on music and dance in front of my wife. I'm a terrible dancer. I, I pick up our dog Kiki and I do silly things with Kiki. I make faces. Um, I, I definitely in traffic love to roll down my window and say things to strangers that make them laugh. I'm, uh, I'm a prankster. I'm a clown. I'm silly. And uh, it, it keeps me sane these days. And it's also part of my culture my personal culture with me, with God, with my family, with you. So we can look at this time and we can definitely know that it's a, it's a difficult time. And if we're gonna feel what's going on, it can really feel hard and heavy. But also remember a lot of what people respond to is hope and hope comes through laughter and fun and happiness when we can find those moments. And it doesn't mean that we don't see what's going on and we're not appreciative or respectful or sensitive to what's going on. I know that we are. But let's also be sensitive to how it is that people need every now and then a little relief, a little light coming in. So I want to share that with you. It's about abundance, certainly. Steve Jobs was very abundant. But it goes back to the beginning of that abundance and the whole experience of Apple. They were having fun. So they decided to keep having fun. And there was Steve Jobs 40 plus years later in the middle of his cancer experience, still having fun. It's a beautiful time to remember all of life, the little windows of light that come in and the little windows of light that we can be to come in for everybody else. Every now and then, not being afraid to shine. Okay, so with that, love you. Lots of fun for you. Every now and then, open up allow it to come through you and you and as you. Peace and blessings. Bye for now.